Hello everybody, welcome back to the program Bright Girl from Fieboro. Today we will continue the subject motion sensor, so welcome to the second part of this section. In this one I will tell you how to install the device in your home, how to add it, pair it with the gateway, and also how to configure it. I will also explain you some parameters that needs to be changed or can be modified. So now we will add the device to the gateway. What you need is obviously the motion sensor and the gateway. In my case, I have UB Home Center here, but it can also be Home Center 3O or Home Center 3 Lite. First thing we need to do is to search the IP address of the gateway. If we are not sure what's the IP address, we can find it on find.fibar.com. So enter find.fibar.com in the web browser, click enter, and you will receive the list of all gateways that are in local REU network. Basing on the serial number of the gateway, you can find the IP address. Click open and it will forward you to the login website. Enter your credentials. In my case, it's default one, so it's admin admin. Then you will be forwarded to the dashboard. Click settings, devices. In the right upper corner, you can see two buttons. The first one is the plus button and the second one is the minus button. They're allowing us to include or exclude device from the gateway. So we are entering the including process. The time is fine and the gateway is in a learning mode. So now we need to click three times on the B button that's un under the case of the device. And as we can see, all the parameters and associations group are uploading and saving to the gateway. So we need to wait a minute. And adding is successful. So now we will refresh the website. We can see three icons. It's a motion sensor, look sensor and temperature sensor. We can rename them and change the location, so change the room. Okay, so we added the device to the gateway. It's not so hard. Now I would like to give you some tips how to install the device in your room. The first thing you need to know is that when you open the box, you can find their screw and double-sided tape. Of course, it depends on the surface. You will mount it. You choose screw or the second one. Uh, in case the walls, I recommend to drill a hole in the wall. In case some other surfaces that are not matte, I would recommend just sticking it. Now I would like to tell you some things that you need to remember about during the installation. The first thing is that, remember, it can be prone to the draft. The second thing is that the device shouldn't be pointed at any source of light or heat. In case of the heat, it's obvious because of the PIR sensor, but about the light. If you put the motion sensor in front of the window, probably it will send some false alarms about the detection of the movement because of the cloud or the, or the bird. So we wouldn't like to have false alarms. The third thing you need to remember is that the motion sensor doesn't like the rooms with rapid fluctuations in air temperatures. And the last thing that many clients are asking me about is what about the pets? Because I have a dog and it sends me all the time the reports and the information that's, that it, the movement was detected. But in fact, there was nobody at home despite the pet. So remember about how high you mount the device, okay? Do not install it very um, low, but try to put it on a table or on a wardrobe, so somewhere on the level of your chest, so that it didn't detect the movement of the dog, for example. The next thing I would like to discuss with you is the battery life of the motion sensor. Obviously, uh, theoretically, it is said that it's two years uh, long, but in fact, it it's all depends. You can make it longer by changing the parameters, by 
picking proper place where you will install it. So there are some parameters that I will discuss in a few minutes that you can change so that the battery live longer. It's about the reports, it's about the thresholds, about the intervals of the reports, for example, the temperature. Of course, there are also some notifications that you would like to, for example, not receive so often, so you can, of course, also change it. What's next? What next thing is that have the um, impact on the battery life? I would say that it's the distance between the gateway and the device. If it's too far away from each other, so the gateway tries to connect all the time and repeats um, the request, sending the request to the motion sensor, it also will um, discharge much quicker. So as I said before, you can modify the parameters so that make um, the life of the battery longer. The question is how to do that. I recommend using uh, the website called manuals.tvr.com. This is the tool that is for you for free. Uh, there are all the instructions, the informations about the devices of Fibaro. So feel free to go there and check some informations that you are not sure about. So on the manuals you have all the parameters described very um, specifically and you have every single information about what parameter is responsible for what. So right now we would like to change uh, the reports, intervals and thresholds. So please, now we will go to the device tab also. We will pick the motion sensor and click on parameters. Here, as you can see, there is a lot of parameters. There are a lot of options. And you, of course, don't need to remember everything. You can check them, as I said before, in the documentation of the device. Also, it's uh, here um, described. So even if you don't understand the title, you can see what exactly the parameter is responsible for. So we can change the illuminance report threshold okay so that the device report the um, illuminance quite rarely also the temperature reports uh, thresholds can be changed so that if it's just a little bit warmer or, or colder we would not receive any um, report from the device the next thing is the illuminance and the temperature report interval so how often the device will report um, the information about the changes to the gateway and remember that it has a power uh, to protect the battery from um, too short life okay so that's it now you can use the motion sensor as a trigger in scenes you can turn on and turn off the lights you can send some alarms in case somebody's at home when you are not so remember that the device have a lot of possibilities just test it and check uh, what can you do about it thank you very much for watching today i hope that you will be in the next uh, section that will be connected with the q a so you will ask me some questions and i will try to provide you as best answer as i can and of course if you have some problems bugs you can um, report them to me and we will try to solve the issues. Thank you very much and see you next section.